Hey there. Um, I want to talk for a minute about this is just another extreme, extemporaneous thing, not a teaching, but I want to talk about trusting the Lord for the people around you, especially believers um, in your life. You know, because of what we are in the flesh, we are going to exact a toll on those around us. They're going to suffer because of us. Um, and when we start to become adults, we become more conscious of that. When the more mature we get, the more, the more conscious I think we become of just how much what we are is a headache for other people. Uh, and, you know, like my wife, I, I mentioned that the institutional church she goes to, they invited her to be part of a home group that's for couples hoping to get me to go. And I didn't go Sunday. And she went and she was alone with 10 other couples and felt really out of place and alone and I didn't know that she didn't go to church that day after the home group thing it was a it's a Sunday morning thing but drove around and I mean really just kind of like sad you know and she told me we went to dinner last night she told me all this and and she's like you know I just this isn't what I wanted uh she goes I get why you can't do the institutional church I and I know this is a problem in me and I'm dealing with it with the Lord or I'm trying to uh, but it hurts and it's hard and I feel like a single person you know you've got your ministry and uh, it's just hard and and I said yeah I, I, I was even tempted to go but I just know I'm going to it's just going to be a problem. Number one, I, everything I teach, uh, I couldn't teach there. I couldn't say there. So it ends up quenching my spirit. And that's, that's what's happened in the past with us, is with me in the institutional churches. You get shut down because you can't function. Now it's an okay church. They have the gospel right. And it's, uh, pretty healthy, pretty harmless for the most part. If you're not paying that much attention. But as a teacher, if I go in there with a teaching gift, I'm scrutinizing everything. I can't help it. Um, anyway, it's just hard for her. I recognize that being married to me is difficult for her. It's not what she signed up for. This dramatic person that... Uh, you know, well, you know, I mean, you've listened to my teachings and everything, you know... I'm strong, I have strong and unique views on almost every topic that Christians are going to talk about. And it, she's like, it's just hard. And there's not a dang thing I can do for her about it. Uh, I could go to support her, but in the end, I think that would do more damage. It would do damage to what she has at the church. She's on the worship team and she's... You know, um, it would stigmatize further and it would shut me down, which then makes me not as good of a husband or a good, good of a person here, you know? So that, and then I had some interactions with some friends last night, uh, where I kind of misinterpreted a situation and misunderstood something that was going on and kind of blew up, made something out of nothing. This is what we do. This is what we are. Everybody. You know, some people isolate themselves from people so that they, become, being conscious of, well, we've got these weaknesses and we're going to just hurt people, you know. Uh, once they find out that, hey, I'm a headache for other people, they want, it makes you want to shut down and hide. It's, that's your first reaction. It's like, well, I don't want to do the damage to people and this is so embarrassing and I'm so sh ashamed. We're ashamed and disappointed in ourselves because we still have expectations on the flesh. Um, 
So what do you do? You know, how can you help the people around you when you're the one damaging? And don't think that you're going to be in any real relationships and not and not cause hurt and misunderstandings and damage and pain, you know, uh, or just being two different kind of people, uh, is going to be a mismatch in some regards. It's just the way it is. So the temptation is to just cower and condemn yourself and shut down and go, oh, woe is me and woe is everybody that has to deal with me. And this is where you got two options. You can shut down three options. You can shut down. (laughs) You can try to fix everything, which will definitely make things worse. You know, if I were to try to fix it and just go, I did that before with her uh, at an institutional church. I went along because I was tired of fighting. And I completely backslid. That did more damage than if I had just stood my ground and been willing to suffer a little bit uh, between us, you know. Uh, You can't fix it, okay? Not only can you... you See, these are all problems that are dealt with, that that are sourced in sin. There's... The misunderstandings, the fact that we hurt each other, the fact that we damage each other is all rooted in sin. What can you do about sin? Nothing. You cannot do anything about sin. And you can't stop sinning. You know, not not at this level. You know, we keep our vessel in honor and we we don't, we we, we try to live a godly life. But when it comes to this kind of stuff, this is deeper and this is the real sin condition. It's not the superficial outward, uh, don't smoke, don't drink, you, you know, don't fornicate, don't murder people, you know, <laughs> all the things that we th- think of as sin, you know. No, this is just because of what you are, because of your weaknesses, because of the world we live in, misunderstandings and offenses are going to come. You're going to tax people. They're going to suffer because of what you are. Can you live with that? Not by yourself. Living with the knowledge that you cause other people to suffer will drive you to despair. So you, you, that's what will happen if you shut down. You'll just be driven to despair. If you go try to fix it in the flesh, you'll make things worse. Because you're the problem to begin with. (laughs) What the last thing they need is more you, you know. That's why making amends and uh, in AA, you know, they had to go and make amends with everybody. Sometimes it creates more misunderstandings than they, you know. The past needs to be the past. Let it, let it be. Let people heal. And then the other option, the third option, is to actually trust the Lord. <laughs> trust the Lord, who is the only one whose blood makes peace and whose blood atoned for our sins, satisfied God, and and then his grace is the only thing that can establish peace between us. He is able to oil the the gears that grind against each other. He's able to put the Holy Spirit in there as oil to make it so that it's not abrasive and doesn't grind anymore. He has to pour out grace on the situation. You know, if you find yourself in one of these situations, the all you can do is go to the Lord and say, Okay, Lord, I see this is what I am, and I see what it's doing to people. I see, and there's not a thing I can do about it, and I don't know how me, I being me, who I am, could have reacted any differently. With my weaknesses, with what I am, this is what you get. (laughs) So, especially in the body of Christ, the good news is that we have a high priest who's touched with the feelings of our weaknesses and intercedes accordingly. 
and he touched with our feeling of our suffering and he's the comforter the good news about the body of christ is that every every you know see my wife's a christian and the people i dealt with last night where i kind of screwed up are christians that that believe in the lord you know what that means they have a high priest and a comforter he uses everything to become everything to you and to everybody he uses what i am to cause my wife to have to lean on him for comfort and that actually accomplishes his purpose i'm not saying go hurt people so that jesus can be their comfort i'm saying you can't fix some of these things but he uses it you have to believe that god is working all things together for good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose and that includes the people that you're hurting and that includes the way you hurt them some usually unintentionally lots of times unintentionally you know sometimes intentionally and for those you need to apologize and whatever but you know sometimes just misunderstandings come and misinterpretations come and confusion comes and and at the end of the conversation everybody's like oh lord how did we get here and a lot of times fellowships blow up because of that kind of stuff people withdraw and hide themselves and put up their guard and try to protect themselves going forward and that then quenches the spirit no this we it it's wonderful if you can actually have a group of people that knows that we're in the flesh knows that we're weak knows that we cause each other to stumble and yet knows that we have a high priest a comforter a king who's working all things together for good who's sovereignly over us and we don't have to let it divide us and take us apart and demolish the fellowship and and send us back hiding we can still keep coming forward together and go yeah that's the way he is oh and also it doesn't have to blow up your expectations so that you can never see that person in the spirit again you know you go oh well he's got this weakness and therefore i can't receive his function i don't even know if he ever was functioning in the lord look at him that's what we tend to do too is we once we see the weakness we can no longer look past the flesh to see christ working in a person again the the way out of all that mess is to actually believe the gospel for each other that's where we need the love to excel you know we we do god teaches us he directs us into the love of god and teaches us to love one another not with our own love but with the love that starts from god where he laid his life, son's life down and gave him freely for us and he's the answer to all the problems and he's been given to us to fix all our problems and to comfort us you know last night in the conversation with a few people uh th things got weird and it was my fault um and i've you know i've apologized but the lord has to step in and comfort the person and at the same time i can't get so condemned and upset that i'm a problem and a headache for people that i stop functioning and that's what my immaturity would have done years ago or you know uh in my immaturity i would have just shut down after something like that and backed out of the fellowship or whatever been embarrassed and you know or f f feel like i have to be overly sensitive but the good news is that this group of people it's not that they're the that we're such great friends and we get it and so we're loyal always no we are weak sinner lepers who know how much we need our savior and we therefore based on that we extend grace to each other and realize that you know what only the lord can comfort uh you i can't fix it and that's an okay place to be and then it gets your fingerprints off the situation because you get your hands off a little bit and you trust it to the lord so i'm just talking to people because i've had a few people talk about this in the last week what do i do about my 
spouse? How do I win them to the Lord How, when I'm the one causing the issues? And, you know, the best thing we can do is turn each other over to the Lord and say, Lord, I trust you to deal with the situation. He will. In the past, when fellowships and things have blown up, it's because people have tried to step in and control and and fix it themselves i'm not talking about where there's a doctrinal disagreement we have to part ways i'm talking about where there's just misunderstandings erupt and people put their guard up because they don't want to be hurt or they don't want to hurt other people and they don't know how to rest in the lord and let him actually fix something wait on him he can he's the only person who can Help the people around you. And the more you know that, the more of a blessing you'll be to people. All right. Uh, this is, I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm on a little hiatus here right now, just resting. Uh, but I did want to speak to this a little bit because I feel like anything I go through, other people are going through too. So, all right, take care.